The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks. Welcome to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, we got an exciting day for you right here. I'm your host, Daryl Martin. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. You can reach me right here at TFNN. And uh, just call 877-927-6648. Again, that's 877-927-6648. And uh, go ahead and post up the uh, deviation levels for you for today. So you can check those out and see where everything stands at right now. Let's go ahead and do our regular market wrap on where the market is. We got the S&P um, after doing a gap fill on all four major indices. The S&P is now up a buck seventy-five. We got the Nasdaq up a dollar twenty-five, and we got the Russell is uh, sort of leading the pack on the downside like it did yesterday. Right now, it is basically flat. It's down a tick. And looking over at the Dow, it is up seven points on the day right now. Going over to our metals, we got copper. It has moved quite a bit. It's down about half a percent so far on the day. And silver is up over one and a half percent. Gold is up $10.70. We got corn down eight. And we got soybeans down 11 and a half. So uh, pretty big moves on ags. They're starting to be basically a percentage point on the day. And then uh, narrowing it down, looking now over at our energy sector on this CL contract on oil. We got oil is just up a mere eight cents on the day after its huge move yesterday. And we got natural gas, uh, pretty uh, wild swings, flew down, flew back up, sort of flattening out at the moment. We'll see where it ends up when the day is over. But, um, you know, definitely had a big move down on the higher inventory report and then uh, decided to go ahead and do a correction and bounce up despite the fact that inventories are up. And right now it is up uh, basically half percent over yesterday. On the currency pairs, we got the euro dollar is down 17 ticks, while the pound dollar continue to show strength compared to the euro dollar is up 79. And we got the Aussie dollar up 14, the U.S. yen up 38 ticks or pips, and then a U.S. franc up 13 pips, and the U.S. Canadian dollar is up just a mere eight pips. So it is also pretty flat on the day along with oil. And so that's our quick market wrap. We'd like to go ahead and check that out and. Uh, Make sure you're up to date across the major markets. And one of the things you want to do is, you know, just make sure you're looking at different markets across the board to see how everything is moving. And uh, let's go ahead and look at our news that came out this morning. We had some interesting news come out. Uh, the preliminary GDP out of Britain actually came in higher than expected, which uh, in turn led to the uh, little bit of a rally that we saw, you could say, over in uh, the British pound. And uh, so I'll pull that up for you. We'll check that out and look at it right now and uh, pull it up. There we go. And so as you can see, uh, they obviously were very excited about that pound dollar report when it came out. We mentioned that yesterday. That would be the big report overnight um, for the pound because it's obviously it's GDP. It's the overall measure of growth. So that's a very, very positive sign um, to see you know them come in with such a positive number on their economy, especially after having um, negative, what was it, 0. 0.7, negative 0. 0.2, negative 0. 0.2. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. So, I mean, they've, that's one of the highest numbers they've had actually since July of 2010. And uh, really, they haven't had that high of a GDP that often um, over recent years. So that's a great uh, preliminary GDP number. And, um, it's, again, it's the broadest measure, and it's the first estimate. So it uh, gives it a lot out of the three different uh, versions of GDP, the preliminary, revised, and final. Um, the preliminary has usually the most impact because it is first. So... And uh, but yeah, you can definitely see you know we got a you know a solid you know nice little move there. I mean it's not I wouldn't say anything to completely write home about, but um, you know we got a solid you know thirty pip uh, jump right there off of that simple report and just gapped right up and just kept going and it's not pretty you know holding stable at the moment and um, fell off a little bit a little earlier as the dollar started getting some strength and the market started pulling back down. And uh, looking over at some other reports that came out, let's see last night we didn't have anything just major. But uh, today, like I said, we did have the GDP that early this morning, and uh, that's 3.30 Central Time when that came out. And looking over here in the United States, we had the core durable good orders came in. And out of that, that number came in higher than expected. It came in at 2%, and they were expecting uh, 0.8. So basically, you know, out, basically, what's the total value of all the things that were bought? 
Um, and 2% is one of the highest numbers that we have seen in quite a while. Um, and actually, since the beginning of the year, January of 2012, was the last time we saw a number reported that high. So a uh, great number that came in this morning. Now, uh, the number was inflated by a couple things. Um, you had airline sales. That was a good chunk of the rise. Um, and then the other thing is sort of interesting, if you dig down and look in the electronics, the iPhone sales, um, electronics usually have a very low sales rate in September. Um, and then also it was in April and June and September. And so when they release the iPhones during one of those months, then uh, what they do is they take all of the electronic sales and they divide them and for you know what percentage they are. Well, since the electronic sales are lower, by releasing things like iPhones during those months, then they actually are able to become a larger percentage of the share and make up more, which is a positive thing, of course. Um, and you know, it just makes everything look better. And, of course, be careful because we got that uh, earnings announcement coming out after the bell today over on Apple and on uh, Amazon. Um, but uh, it would actually, it really, it inflated the number. And for the expectation of that, you know, electronics piece to keep pushing that up, it's probably not likely uh, going into, you know, the next, you know, month or two simply based on the iPhone sales. But um, it definitely did inflate the September number um, on the electronic side and with airline sales inflating that. And it looks like uh, American Airlines is deciding to fly again. They're hiring a bunch of new pilots. So, um, you know, who knows how all that's going to play out. But uh, hopefully people can actually get their flights on time. And then um, looking at over, we had unemployment claims. Unemployment claims um, did tick down a little bit. Um, last week they were 388000 and they actually had to revise the number um, up to 392000 so if you wonder why, like if the expectation was 371,000 on unemployment claims, okay, but then, um, you know, it came in below that, 369,000. So that should be a really, really good thing. And so you're over here, you're looking at the markets, you're checking it out. And uh, let me see, let me turn off the, uh, I'm hiding the overnight session here. And so when you're looking at the market on all that stuff, uh, then what you can see is... The move here at 7:30, when the announcement came out, and you would sort of expect to see a big up move, right? But you didn't see that. You saw a little pop, and then it moved down, and then it just you know turned it on down. That number was not positive because it was overshadowed by the fact that they had to also increase the previous number, and they actually had to increase several previous numbers. So they had increased the last number up to 392. The one before that, they had increased up to 342. So about all of them, they actually had to uptick them. And so if you add in that expectation that they may end up doing the same thing by about three or 4,000 uh, jobs, then this one can easily come in at best at expectations. And um, no matter how you look at it, 369,000 is still a very high number. So uh, um, unemployment claims built in there. So it really was not a positive report because it, you know, beyond, I guess you could say it improved over last time. It's about as positive as you can get on it. But, uh, you know, by having to move the last couples, you know, to make them higher to be accurate, then it just uh, it lowers the validity of the number itself and uh, has a bearish tendency to it. So now if we look on over, and I'll uh, put those back up there for you so you can check out those deviation levels over on the Tigers, Dan, and over on Tiger TV. And uh, if we look on over here, what else we got? We got uh, we the durable goods, of course, that came out. We got, you know, core durables that came out at the same time. and uh, But all of that came out at the exact same time. So you had core durable goods coming in better than expected. At the same time, you had unemployment claims coming in. And core durable goods, it's more of a, you know, really a seasonally adjusted factor. So it wasn't, you got to look at this, remember I talked about seasonality. And so you have to really consider the seasonality of it and how there was a couple things that inflated that number. It wasn't necessarily a great strong number across the board on, um, you know, core durable goods. And then we had uh, pending home sales. They came in much worse than expected. That came out at 9 a.m. And you can see that really is uh, what happened that led to the sell-off that filled the gap in today. Uh, dropped down. Did a little bit of a pullback for a second as they were basically trying to get some people in on the market. And uh, it's a pretty normal pattern there. And let's see here. So anyway, so... After that happened, it just pushed all the way down, filled in the gaps across the board. And uh, we'll go through a look at those real quick. And once it filled those in, now it's sort of flattened out um, right now. And uh, earnings, of course, you know, this season being pretty uh, pretty bearish, you know, as far as earnings goes. Um, usually we don't have, you know, over half the company, you know, major companies now have reported on their earnings. And um, yeah, there, there have been some winners, you know, like your Vegas stocks and all that. But uh, there's been a lot of bad news come out. And uh, the last time we had third quarter bad earnings, 
um, you know, 2001, I would say 2007, actually, was the last time we had it. Before that was 2001. You go back to 1989. So um, all eras that you really wouldn't want to be long in the market right before those bad earnings came out. And, you know, you could say, well, seasonally, they may not be the strongest time, you know, whatever, summer, et cetera. Um, but... You know, you could override that if you didn't have a bad economy with the GDP continuing to go lower. So the economy isn't overriding the fact. So that just makes it worse. And we still have the complete uncertainty happening over in Europe way year after year um, going on right now. But with bad GDP, bad international, and then now bad earnings, it's just all adding up um, to look you know, pretty, pretty dour for the market. And uh, so, you, again, like last time we saw this was 2007, third quarter horrible earnings like this. And then before that, 2001, and then back to 19. It's a uh, you know, it's not the best seasonal trend to see third quarter earnings coming in this subpar. Uh, we also had natural gas storage come out. It came in uh, higher than it did previously. Um, it also came in higher than the expectation. Natural gas, like I said, did bounce. And uh, I'll pull that chart up for you. We'll look at that real quick. And uh, didn't move near as much as I thought it was going to move, but uh, did move on down, and then but came right on back up. And I basically filled in the gap and then some from yesterday and is now sort of chilling out over here. We'll see what it does before the natural gas market closes out. And uh, it'll close out here in, you know, not too long. So uh, I've got about another hour or so and the natural gas market will close on down. But, um, you know, a lot of activity, a lot of movement, and uh, there was a whole lot of gameplay going on if you were watching that um, live when that natural gas market was moving earlier this morning. And that really wraps up the news for the day um, so far, except for, of course, we got the big earnings coming up right after the bell. And uh, so and one thing to remember is you can trade Nadex, like on the binaries and spreads, you can trade them to the 415 time frame. Okay, so for you stock traders out there um, that are used to, you know, if you don't trade, if you're not used to trading, like, you know, late um, or you're afraid, which you should be to trade those after hours, uh, you know, stock trades. Then, uh, you know, between 3 and 3.15 there, then you can actually go in and you can trade Nadex on the futures market like the NASDAQ, since it's Apple and Amazon. Um, you can trade the, you know, NASDAQ 100 futures up until 3.15. And you can go and you can even put a straddle on like right before it or, you know, there's just a lot of different plays that you could do. But uh, be a lot of fun. I definitely would check that out. You can sign up for a Nadex account if you don't have one. And um, if you want to know how to get one, just hop over to TFNN.com. Click on Nadex right there. And then click on create an account. Now you can go from start to funded. Um, in little as five minutes, you only have to put a hundred dollars into fund an account. You know, if you're really going to be trading, you probably want to have a couple grand in there. Uh, but I mean, you can literally go in and you can place trades for five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever. Um, and really, you know, just small quantity trades easily and get started. Um, also, if you want a demo account, you just want to demo it out. Just go to our products, and you'll see demo account. Click on demo account. And fill in your username, first name, last name, phone, email address, hit apply for demo. They'll send you a password, and you can log it right in. And, uh, you know, maybe have some fun right here after the bell when these earnings come out. All right, stay with her. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading App. And uh, we just did the wrap-up on the fundamentals for the day. And, um, yeah, the yeah, GDP uh, jumping up all of a sudden, you know, over full percentage point. Uh, being Remember, it is preliminary GDP. And, uh, yeah, it will most likely be revised. But, um, anyway, so, you know, you can go in. You can dig down further into that report. I'll give you the link for that if you want to check it out. But um, it's right over here. It's going to be at ons.gov.uk. And um, so you can go in and, you know, check out the, all the details about the GDP report and uh, look it up and what came out of Britain. And, you know, basically, where did they come up with that number? Because it just uh, doesn't quite seem accurate <laughs> to come in that high. So it's sort of like our last unemployment number. Uh, but, of course, that last unemployment number and uh, was affected by one major thing, and that was they cut off the long-term benefit extensions um, for most states um, effective in September. So, therefore, that's why the number came out so good. Um, so, or actually, not August. So, they started coming out in September, October, and uh, we'll have another number come out, like, what, four days before the election, I think. And uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that one comes out. But it was definitely a well-played move by the Democrats to cut off those extensions. Um, I mean, politically, of course, uh, simply because, you know, they got the, Demo the Republicans to agree to cutting expenses, um, which was an easy thing to do. At the same time, they ended up cutting them right before the elections. So therefore, that made the unemployment number drop. Um, and that was the manipulation that was behind the scenes, making that unemployment number drop right before elections. And uh, so... You know, the way that, again, that by dropping people the ability to claim, then they drop the ability for them to show up on the unemployment rate 
and therefore the number automatically goes down. Um, and it's you know one of the mini games. Um, and then we have uh, let's see what do we got going on? Let's see here tomorrow. So we have a couple things. We got uh, Japan is going to have its core CPI coming out later tonight. That'll come out at six thirty. So that's a you know could be a US yen, Euro yen, pound yen trade. And um, then rolling on over to tomorrow, we got let's see Spanish unemployment rate coming out. And uh, that'll come out at 2 a.m. and is expected to be at 25.2%. And, yes, that is the number they report. It's not necessarily the real number. And uh, 25.2%. And uh, so, you know, you, you wonder why they might be a little hesitant to accepting bailout funds and additional austerity measures. Um, and uh, here's the link for you on that one, so you can check that out And uh, when it comes out here. But it's uh, INE.ES. Okay, so you got INE.ES. It'll translate the site for you into English, and uh, but you can check that out, and that'll give you the uh, link you need to check on the Spanish unemployment rate that'll come out. And um, you know, usually you would think simply one country's unemployment rate in the entire EU would be such a big deal, but since uh, this could affect their decision of whether or not to accept, a, you know, any kind of bailout, and uh, if their yield can spike, and what will, what will they do? Uh, that's why this number does have some significance built into it. And then looking over at advanced GDP coming out of the United States, okay? So we got that number coming out on Friday. And uh, you saw the impact that the pound dollar had that had on that. So now we have the advanced GDP coming in. Um, and, again, there's three GDPs, okay? And uh, this is the, you know, GDP is the broadest measure of economic health. And you're going to have the preliminary GDP. You're going to have the advanced and the preliminary and then the final GDP. So um, this is the advanced GDP, and uh, the office that does the uh, basically the analysis on that. Uh, there's a lot of different places you can go for it, but to get the one right here um, for the United States, you're going to go to bea.gov, and uh, that's where you'll get all the information about you know the Bureau of Economic Analysis. So that's where you're going to get the GDP number right here for the United States, and they are expecting that to come in at 1.9 percent. So that's actually expecting an increase over the advanced GDP number that came in in July of 1.5. and um, But still lower than the actual numbers that came in, which were below expectations back in April and January of this year. So uh, even at 1.9, that's not a, you know, a great number. And they actually had to revise uh, the last number. It was 1.5. They actually had to revise it down to 1.3. And uh, the one before that was 2.2. They had to revise it to 1.9. So they've had to keep moving these numbers down and um, as they come out. So they keep revising them, of course. And they'll revise them when they release every new news release. So don't just look at, you want to look at a few things, okay? Anytime you're looking at a news report, just to remind you, you want to look at what is the forecast versus the actual number that comes out. Did they revise the previous reported number, okay? And then you also want to look at how did that number look last year. So last year we had 2.5% was the actual number that came in. And then they revised that, of course, down to one8 uh, percent. So last year we were at 1.8 percent actual, 2.5 reported, and um, so right now we're going to have the same number, a worse number, a better number. Is it better than last time? And they revised last times. Uh, anyway, so uh, we'll come on back and we'll look at a few more things. Wrapping up the hour here, we'll go ahead and check out the deviation levels where the markets at are right now. Stay right there. We'll be back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here. We just went over the uh, reports and a couple things also that you want to keep in mind that are coming up is uh, we got daylight savings time just around the corner. And uh, so, uh, actually, Britain, I want to say Britain and Europe, is it uh, Britain and Europe are going to have theirs coming up on Saturday? Yeah, Britain, Europe, and um, Switzerland are all going to be updating to uh, their daylight savings time shift. So, um, you want to make sure you update that if you live in those countries out there, and because uh, you can listen to us anywhere in the world. And so, daylight savings time coming up. And then, of course, we're here in the United States. We're going to be a week later uh, we'll be updating um, actually on uh, Monday. So on November 4th, Daylight Savings Time is going to update in the U.S. and Canada. But um, if you're over there in the European area, then you'll be doing that this Saturday. All right. So uh, that doesn't make things confusing at all, does it? <laughs> it's like, just leave it one way or the other. Um, anyway, so going on back and checking out where everything is at. Well, like I talked about earlier, we did have all four of the major U.S. indices. They came in. They opened up. And they opened up with a gap, and they filled on in. And uh, you can see it happening there, there. And uh, I actually played all four of these gaps this morning, and uh, they all filled, so I was pretty excited about that. And uh, the Dow seemed to take a little bit longer, but it went down um, you know, pretty solid uh, on the move down. And it's uh, you know, really leading the pack on the, on the downside now. So it uh, really resisted it. The other ones beat it to the punch on filling the gap. And uh, but then when it decided to break, it uh, stayed pretty much pretty low. It, it really hasn't wanted to move much above yesterday's close, 
And uh, out of the four indices right now, it's the one that is down. Actually, the Russell just now started breaking back down and um, below and uh, after that little move up. So we'll see if they can uh, keep any of that momentum or not. But right now, things not looking uh, too positive for the market on the day. And, of course, today's earnings after the bell are going to be the big impact that we'll be looking for to see where the market goes overnight and for our Friday trading. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's zoom in a little bit here. And uh, let me drop off the overnight, uh, or actually add on, I guess, the overnight trading. So we can see that in there, and we'll go through and we'll check out the markets and where they're at right now and how they've reacted to this uh, basic deviation levels. And uh, I got some good news on that. We'll be talking about that tomorrow on the show. And uh, so let me pull that up right here, and I'll pull up our deviations, and we'll be all set right there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do a walkthrough on the charts for you. And uh, I'll post those back up as well if you need that a little bit later here. But let's go ahead and knock it out. So we got the S&P with a uh, basically staying right inside of its half deviation marks. We're not breaking out too high one way or the other. Overnight, it did move up to the half deviation there. Um, did not hold on to it for long. And uh, topped out right there at 14.17. And uh, really 14.16, that's like 0.75. 1417 was a 0 0.7 deviation level. So if you're long, then you'd be tightening your stops at a 0.7 deviation. When it hit there, you like tighten your stop up. And uh, depending on what kind of bars you trade, I trade. I like to trade Renko, a, a unique type of Renko bar. Um, or if you're trading, let's say, 10-minute bars, it goes up, it spikes up, it hits that level, and you tighten your stop. You'd be glad you did because right after it hit that, it turned around and went on back down. And basically, I said, it's filled in the gap on the day, not quite moving a half deviation below yesterday's close. And uh, hopping on over, checking out the Russell. And on the Russell right there, uh, we did see that same big early morning spike out of the gate. Uh, basically, just hitting a whole bunch of buy orders and filling a bunch of people that uh, really, I guess, just weren't happy. Because <laughs> they put buy orders in and they used all those buy orders sitting up there to uh, help push the market down because they needed somebody to fill their sell orders. So they rallied it on up there and uh, took those out. And... Uh, Anyway, so as that happened, we had the market spike on up over on the Russell up to 18.7. And uh, that was just past uh, the half deviation level. And so if you're tightening at 0.5, then you're tightening again at 0.7, and then again at 0.1, then uh, you would have been glad because, of course, it turned around. And, and then, of course, you should have been looking for a short because you know that you had a gap fill. Um, and so that was definitely a high probability gap fill anytime that you see that kind of setup come into play. And the gap fill being just right inside the highs of yesterday, right at the highs of yesterday. And uh, so it was so close. I was actually a little bit nervous on them this morning. But as soon as that market spiked up, I uh, sat back a little bit and started moving back down. and broke that low and hopped on in. And then uh, looking over at the NASDAQ. So on the NASDAQ right here, we saw that move also go on up, of course, this morning. So you sort of said they all did the same thing. Moving on up to 2673.5. And uh, so on that, we uh, we broke that half deviation. Didn't quite get to the 0.7, but uh, definitely would have had tightened stops ready for the gap fill. Moved on down to 26.42, and uh, which is not quite a half deviation move down yet. And uh, everything's sort of quiet ahead of what earnings are yet to come out. And, of course, the GDP number coming out tomorrow. And uh, we'll see on the Dow, we actually had an earlier spike. It spiked a little earlier in the morning uh, when that news did come out. It decided to really do a big up move on it. And it spiked more than the others. And you can see it moved on up to 13.119. And uh, so when it did that, it moved up to 13.119, which was, again, almost a 0.7, but not quite. And it uh, turned around on it back down. And it is, uh, like I said, been sort of leading the charge um, on the move back after this most recent retracement. And we'll see if it keeps that up. But uh, right now, it's moved down to 12.974. And again, not a significant move. But uh, we'll see if it uh, can, how much lower it can move. It can move down to 12.954. But that should be a half deviation move on the way down. And uh, looking on over at our other pairs, let's go ahead and let's check out the, uh, let's see here, we got the metals. We got copper coming right on up. And um, copper is definitely pushing down. It's I almost got it. If you look at it back on like a weekly time frame, and I'll back out here so you can see that, you can see it's almost got a half deviation or a half 50% uh, retracement from this most recent low to most recent high, and uh, which would also line up to this. So you start to get a little wedge going on, and copper is going to be going somewhere fast soon. And um, but so you can check that out and see it's uh, definitely very very close to that level. And um, if we break it um, back down and looking at just the intraday, move down to 3.538. The pits are closed now over in copper, 
but 3.538 was a break below the half deviation level. So on a short trade, had a good solid short trade right there, and uh, we'll go in and, like I said, I like to pull up the 10-minute bars. And uh, so on that short trade right there, you would have been tight into your stops as soon as it hit a half deviation level and it popped right back up. So it would have been a great uh, trailing stop for you. And then looking on over at the gold market. Gold uh, moving up all night and uh, hasn't done a whole lot this morning. And uh, the gold markets have now closed on down and uh, really flattened out. So I, you know, I, I thought there might be a little bit more of a rally this morning. I had on a trade on a hedge trade. Uh, that one didn't work out, but uh, the other trades turned out pretty nice. And uh, so all the gap trades and everything else balanced it out. That's why it's nice to trade more than one market. And uh, but it did move on up all night. So uh, that you know that call was definitely right on. And um, you can see it moved up to. Let's see, we got about a high of 1718.9. And, um, you know, not completely a surprise, but, uh, you know, 1718.11, or 0.1, I guess, uh, if you want to round it off, is uh, was the move on gold, uh, one deviation move. So it literally just moved right up to its deviation mark, and, uh, you know, it did that and paused at it, paused at it, paused at it, and it went on down. So that's when I was like, you know, we're at this deviation, we probably should head this off, and did on there. So uh, the next uh, thing you want to check out is silver. So silver also had a nice little rally overnight. And uh, we can check that out. It did move up. Uh, moved up pretty strong. And it got a high in there of 32.26. And on silver, 32.26 was a move uh, just a little bit. I mean, just barely past one deviation, which was 32.18. Um, uh, so, and uh, you know, so it literally it broke that level. And I also did it earlier and broke the level right here. And so with that move in mind, you know, this really there wasn't a whole lot of move left for silver to make. And because, uh, again, that deviation level is to encompass a majority of all movement during a given day. And uh, looking over at the natural gas futures. So, um, and then we'll make sure we're looking at December's now. And because uh, everything's rolling on in there. And uh, so we're on the natural gas futures. We had the move down, the move up. Move down, though, uh, moved down to 3.712. And um, so that did move down past the half deviation of 3.72. Um, but didn't move on any further than that. So I was surprised we didn't get a bigger move. But, of course, it wasn't a big number that was off of expectations. So um, going on over and looking at oil. On oil, we can go in and check that out, see what we got. And on oil, we came in. We got a little move up, a little move down. We are flat on the day. On our upside, we moved on up to 86.61 there. And on oil, you would have been looking at a deviation move, 86.62. So uh, literally one tick off of the uh, deviation on that open rebar bar there, but uh, moved on up to the high we got. Let's see, the high on oil is 86.75. And uh, so really, I mean, it's very, very close. Uh, perfect deviation level there for you to tighten up on your stops. And then on the move back down, basically filled in, I guess you could say the gap. And um, then you can go on over here, and you see that there was a low of 85.23 on oil. And uh, that basically just, you know, isn't really any kind of mark. It just you know came back down and just oscillating since and everything going sort of flat at the moment. And uh, looking over at the corn markets, corn uh, decided to wake up and move on down. And so checking that one out right now, we had corn has moved actually down to a low of 742.5 and uh, 743.75 was the deviation mark. So as soon as it hit right here, tighten your stops. Okay, and uh, you do that with volume on top of that at a deviation level. That's a really good sign that they're what they're doing is they're buying back. So notice how it went way down and then it flew back up, and now we're sort of up on the current minute bars, right, ten minute bars there. So the guys that sold are now buying back, and uh, the big boys out there, and they did it right, literally perfectly to the one deviation mark. So that was a just a great trade setup, and um, you know perfect deviation level for trading on that one today. And then uh, looking over at soybeans. So on the soybeans right here, what do we got going on? We have a move down to a low of 1557.25. And uh, that move, uh, let's see here, would have taken us a little past a half, but not all the way to a 0.7 deviation move. And that wraps up our agricultural markets. The last ones we got are a few FX pairs. And uh, let me see right here. So on the euro dollar, zoom right on in. And we can see a low down to 1.2942. And uh, that movement, well, pretty flat. 
So not a big move on the downside. What about the upside? On the upside, if you're catching that overnight, I mean, this is a nice down move, okay, but just not compared to yesterday's, you know, close. So the upside move here, we got an upside of high 3.019, and on Euro dollar, looking okay, to move up to 1.3022, uh, would have been at a 0.7 deviation level, 1.3007 would have been a half deviation level. So you would have tightened stops basically on this bar right here, probably would have got stopped out on this. And then uh, it basically didn't even quite make the point seven, started pulling back, and went on back down, and basically did a half deviation retracement on the way back. And then uh, looking over at what else we got? We got Aussie dollar. Check it out, the Aussie. And the Aussie made some nice moves. Uh, you can see that move up and move back down. It's had some good moves, but it almost looks exactly the same as the euro dollar. Uh, with the move on up to 1.0396. And it's just sort of interesting across the board as you're seeing a lot of these markets coming in um, sort of being flat compared to their previous day's close. But the Aussie dollar, uh, 1.0396, was a pretty big move for it. That was only literally two ticks. Let's see, uh, two ticks literally. I don't want to see if there's a higher high, but I think we got the high. Yep, 1.0396. So 1.0398 was the one deviation mark. And so it was, like I said, just two ticks away from a one deviation move. And then it did a full deviation retracement back down. And then it's bounced back off of that. And um, so, again, this is diagnostic deviation, not standard deviations. And uh, we'll be posting these up on TFNN for you very, very soon. I guess we'll be talking to you tomorrow and uh, seeing what kind of updates we got for you on that. And then looking on over here at the high of the day, 1.6142. So 1.6142 on the day. Uh, move on up. That's actually a one and a half, a little past a one and a half deviation move. And, uh, of course, that was we had that big surprise, right? So it's not a surprise that it busted out a little bit of the standard one deviation simply because uh, that would have been uh, because of the basically the news announcement. So the one deviation move, the exact one deviation on pound dollar, was 1.6101. So really 1.6101, oh, so like right here. It basically it went, it went right to it, and then uh, it basically moved up another half deviation, and then it just basically swung trade or stayed right in between that range ever since. And uh, so don't see a whole lot more action on the currencies going on for the rest of the day at the moment. U.S. franc here, however, let's go ahead and check that out. It did make a nice little move down. It moved on down first to 0 0.9290. And uh, U.S. franc on that 0 0.9290 would have been a 0.7 deviation move. Uh, 0 0.9291 was actually the 0 0.7. So as soon as it hit that, you're tightening your stops. Boom, you're out. It starts to reverse. You go into reversal. It moves all the way back up. And uh, basically a full deviation back up um, from the low there. And so it's uh, just a great move on the U.S. franc. And then uh, let's see here if we take the high of that, the mark, 0.9344. And our half deviation above yesterday's close. Again, that's a full deviation of that 0.7 and that, a little bit more than a full deviation. But uh, we actually had, and I kid you not, 0.9344 <laughs> to the tick. All right. So I just showed you right there. Let me see that. And again, that's U.S. franc. I'll make that a little bit easier to see. U.S. franc. And um, moving right on up there back to 0.9344 as the next price target. And it did hit that, and it stopped to the tick, came back down, hit it again, and stopped to the tick. So uh, just, you know, really on the money there. And uh, market's doing what they say they're going to do. Because remember, these numbers are pulled from all the implied volatilities of four different options month, four different options out of those months and put together. And uh, this is really a missing piece in most people, most traders' training is they don't use statistics. They use a lot of times technical analysis, but you've got to use statistics also so you can have proper expectations of movement. And uh, stay with me. We'll be right back after this commercial break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning, by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, going on through everything, looking at for you and going ahead and doing a market wrap. So uh, we are also going to wrap up a couple more currency pairs here. We wrap up the U.S. franc, looking at the USD Canadian. And uh, we can see on the day for the diagnostic deviation levels, it moved on down to a low of 0 0.9901. And uh, we had a move, uh, the 0 0.7 deviation was 0 0.9902, so just perfect, because it would have had to tighten your stops at that point. You tighten your stops, you got kicked out right about here on your short side, and then market moved on around and moved on back up. And then looking over at the U.S. yen right now, and uh, U.S. yen moved on up to a high of 80.32, and 80.35 was actually the one deviation mark. So it literally was just a few ticks, just literally three little pips away from a full deviation move, and it's not done yet. So, uh, but the U.S. yen having a lot of rally over some of the you know this news coming out of Japan right now. You know they've been in the news a lot lately, and it uh, looks like they're trying to make some sort of comeback. But uh, I think they're failing because the yen is getting weaker and weaker. Anyways. Uh, 
that's going on, and it it did go ahead and try to do a pullback, but then it moved on back up and did a pullback uh, down to let's see what we got here, seventy nine ninety four, and uh, that move right there would have put it right at uh, just a little bit above the previous day's close. Nothing major to write home about, but that almost a full deviation move, and um, you know, so pretty big move right there for the U.S. yen. A lot of times it can be a little bit quieter, just depending upon what news is coming out in the markets. And uh, now just to do a wrap and go on back and check out the major indexes and looking at where they're all at, we can see uh, moving on in that the uh, S&P 500 has, you know, like I said, it, it went down, it pushed on down, it broke down and filled that gap, it pulled back up, sort of staying flat on that. And then I'm um, looking over at the other pairs right now, and we're sort of seeing the same thing. Um, really nothing moving on Russell and nothing moving on NASDAQ and you know, Dow is uh, pretty much staying flat as well. And it's pretty amazing if you go back and you look at the daily charts uh, and you turn off, if you actually go in and turn off the settings, so that way you can uh, remove the overnight trading. And, I mean, the bars are just, you know, flat. So um, so we're at a major consolidation area. We're also at a major support area. And uh, the market's going to break one way or another. It's going to break hard. And so you need to be ready for that. And, uh, you know, just make sure you have your ducks in a row and that you're using limited risk. And that's where something like trading on Nadex definitely comes into play. And uh, let's see here. We'll throw that up there and show you that. And uh, I'll maximize the grid. There we go. And, uh, but, I mean, you, like, it's just like three identical bars. And uh, <laughs> side by side. You get a little bit more range on them, though, right? So a little bit more popping out right there. But if you remove that overnight, you can really see just how crazy that is. I mean, just like lining up across the board and I had two great gap fill days so you gotta love that and um, so it'll be interesting to see what the uh, news reports do and of course the big effect being on the you know US Tech 100 NASDAQ um, because the big earnings coming out here after the bell so don't forget about those alright let's do a quick market wrap we got the S&P up a point and a half we got the NASDAQ up 2.75 we got the Russell uh, up a tick right now we got the Dow down 8 points on the day we got copper is up about or actually down sorry about a 0.4% right there we got silver up 1.5% on the day we got gold up 0.65 we got on the agricultural side we got corn up down 2.5 points we got soybeans down 10.75 and over on our energy sector we got oil still flat on the day just up nine pips and natural gas now is uh, just down uh, a quarter percent right now so it moved down moved up and is now pulling on back and looking over at our currencies the euro dollar still down on the day right now still down 25 pips pound dollar still strong at 77 pips up Aussie dollar up 18 US yen up 43 US franc up 2 and US Canadian is up 8 hope you have a great day and a safe trading day and I will see you tomorrow right here on the Dynastic Trading Hour I'll also see you tomorrow morning on the Bull Bear Binary Hour with Tommy O'Brien with a great show coming up for you